In our culture, we believe that we're something like a cancer on the planet and that our activity is unconscionably destructive and that the best thing we could do is to cease having children and make ourselves scarce. And I think that that's a viewpoint that's cruel and vicious and resentful and appalling. And I buy none of it. We do the best we can under very difficult circumstances and we're only barely baking, waking up to our planetary responsibilities and not doing such a bad job for people who've only figured it out 50 years ago. So I'm trying to offer people some encouragement for their trouble. And they seem in staggeringly desperate need of that. You really have to stop comparing yourself in some ways to other people. And the reason for that is that the particularities of your life are so idiosyncratic that there isn't anyone really all that much like you, you know, because the details of your life happen to matter. And so maybe you compare yourself to some rock star or something like that, and, you know, the person's rich and famous and glamorous and all that, but, you know, they're alcoholic and they use too much cocaine and they've had three divorces, and it's like, how the hell do you make sense out of that? Is that someone that you should judge yourself harshly against or not? The answer is you don't know, because you don't know all the details of their lives. And who do you know that you can compare yourself to? That's easy. You. Yesterday. So here's a good goal. It's something like, well, aim high. And I, I really mean that. It's like, and we'll talk about that a little bit too. Aim high, but use as your control yourself. It's like, so your goal is to make today some tiny increment better than yesterday. Diversity. Inclusivity. Equity. That the triumvirate, right, the, the modern triumvirate, um, equity is our equality of outcome. Okay, let's talk about diversity. Are people different or not? Well, if they're diverse and diversity is worth pursuing, then people are different. Or they're not, it's one or the other. So if they're diverse, they're different. Well, if they're different, if you let them manifest their diversity, you're not going to get equality of outcome. It's so incoherent that it defies comprehension. It's like if people were the same, well, then you get equality of outcome. And if they were the same, then you wouldn't have to worry about diversity. But if they're different, importantly different, culturally or biologically, whatever the reasons you happen to come up with, and you leave them be, they're going to pursue their individual idiosyncratic diverse interests, and that's going to produce an entire plethora of unequal outcomes. Let's say you need a goal, but we don't want to let your distance from the goal crush you. So you've got to set up a goal and then you've got to make the goal, break the goal down into parts so that you can move towards it and you have a fairly high likelihood of doing it. So that, that's a bit, bit of practical, I wouldn't say advice, it's, it's because it's better than advice. It's, it's some practical knowledge about how to go about achieving an aim. Set a high aim, but differentiate it down so you know what the next step is and then make the next step difficult enough so you have to push yourself past where you are, but but also provide yourself with a reasonable probability of success. It's also what you do with children, right? You, you want to push them because they need to grow up and be more than they are, right? But you don't want to crush them with constant failure. So what you do is aim high and make the goal difficult but proximal. What younger people have to contend with, generally speaking, is an excess of chaos because they're not very disciplined. And so you need to, you know, we kind of have this idea that while you're free as a child and then you that you have a certain delightful wonderful positive freedom as a child and then that's given up as you approach adulthood but the truth of the matter is is that you have a lot of potential as a child but none of that is capable of manifesting itself as freedom before you become disciplined and discipline is a matter of the imposition of order and the order is necessary especially for people who are hopeless and nihilistic and lots of people are hopeless and nihilistic way more people than you think and part of that is because no one's ever really encouraged them. And so the book is in part a matter of encouragement. It's like, lay yourself, lay a disciplinary structure on yourself. Get the chaos in, in, in check. And then you can move towards a state that's freer. Because it's disciplined first. Like, look, if you're going to become a concert pianist, there's going to be several thousand hours of extraordinarily disciplined practice. That's the imposition of order on your potential, let's say. But what comes out of that is a much grander freedom. And so in virtually every freedom that you have in life that's true freedom is purchased at the price of 
discipline. And so, because I think that it's, it's nihilism and, and hopelessness that constitute the major existential threat, especially to young people at the moment, then I was concentrating on the necessity of discipline and order.